It's week 11 of the 2020 NFL season, and Travis Fulgham is warming up on a rainy day ahead of a matchup against the Browns. This would be the last game Travis Fulgham would start this fantasy season after starting this season as the number one wide receiver across all formats in the first five starts of his career. But how did we get here? It's time for a Fantasy Football Rewind. Travis Fulgham was a walk-on at Old Dominion, playing five years there, and on his redshirt senior year, he posted 63 receptions, 9 touchdowns, and a conference-leading 1,083 receiving yards over 12 games. That year, he was one of the first Old Dominion players to participate in the Senior Bowl. Fulgham entered the 2019 NFL Draft as a projected late-round pick and was picked in the sixth round with pick 184 by the Detroit Lions. Travis Fulgham was waived by the Lions before the 2019 season and then re-signed to their practice squad. Fulgham would remain on the Lions practice squad until December 12, 2019, where he was promoted to the active roster ahead of their Week 15 matchup against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Fulgham would see primarily special teams duty that game, only playing four offensive snaps. The next week, Fulgham's offensive snaps would go up to 17, and he would see two targets, but wasn't able to pull any in. In the final week of the 2019 season, Fulgham would get 42 offensive snaps, which was 70% of the Lions' offensive snaps, but would only see one target and again no receptions. Travis Fulgham would be waived by the Lions on August 9th of 2020 and would be claimed by the Green Bay Packers the next day. Unfortunately, he would be waived again just nine days later. This is where the Philadelphia Eagles would claim Travis Fulgham on August 25th, 2020. The Eagles would waive him in September but re-signed him to the practice squad three days later. With wide receivers Alshon Jeffrey still sidelined after off-season Liz Frank's surgery, and Deshaun Jackson injuring his hamstring week three, along with tight end Dallas Godert going on IR with an ankle injury, the Philadelphia Eagles would promote Travis Fulgham to their active roster on October 3rd, 2020, just one day before a week four Sunday night football matchup against the San Francisco 49ers. Fulgham would play 60% of the offensive snaps, see three targets, and haul two of those in for 57 yards and his first NFL touchdown. This was good for a wide receiver 25 finish and half PPR scoring. Nothing that was causing the fantasy football community to go rushing to claim him. In fact, some believed it was a fluke. In a Week 5 matchup against the Pittsburgh Steelers, Travis Fulgham would post the best game of his career. Fulgham saw a monstrous 13 targets, catching 10 of them for 152 yards and a touchdown. This was good for the number 2 overall wide receiver finish and half PPR. This performance put Fulgham on the fantasy football radar. He was only owned in about 3% of leagues, and after establishing himself as Carson Wentz's favorite target and the Eagles receiving group still decimated with injuries, Fulgham was starting to be picked up at a faster pace. Week 6 against the Baltimore Ravens, Fulgham would see double-digit targets again, catching 6 of those passes for 75 yards and his third straight game with a touchdown. This line was good for another top 10 wide receiver finish, as the number 9 overall in half PPR. Fulgham's snap had continued to go up again, now on the field for over 80% of the offensive snaps. Fulgham was being picked up much quicker and since last week had risen to 31% owned, but after a third consecutive touchdown game and Zach Ertz going on IR, this number was going to skyrocket. Week 7 saw Fulgham's third straight double-digit target game, catching five of them for 73 yards but no touchdowns. With no touchdown and a higher-than-average wide receiver scoring week, Fulgham actually fell out of the top 30 wide receivers for the week. By this point, Travis Fulgham was rostered in about 62% of leagues and a third straight double-digit target game and being on the field for 96% of the offensive snaps was going to keep pushing that number up. Travis Fulgham would reward managers who stuck with him in week 8, 
seeing seven targets, catching six of them for 78 yards and a touchdown. He was the number seven overall wide receiver in half PPR scoring. Fulgham saw 94% of the Eagles' offensive snaps and led the team in targets yet again. Fulgham was clearly Carson Wentz's favorite target, even with first-round rookie wide receiver Jalen Rager back from IR. Fulgham had now caught touchdowns in four of the five games he played in this year, saw double-digit targets in three of those games, and has been on the field for over 80% of the team's offensive snaps in three straight weeks. The Eagles were heading into their Week 9 bye week, and since playing his first game in Week 4, Travis Fulgham was tied for the third most targets in the league, had the seventh most receptions, the most receiving yards, and was tied for second for the most receiving touchdowns. He was the number one fantasy football wide receiver for standard, half PPR, and full PPR leagues. Pro Football Focus had Travis Fulgham as their highest graded second year wide receiver through this point in the year. He had come out of nowhere to reward fantasy football managers who took a shot on him. And honestly, if you had a halfway decent team combined with the number one fantasy wide receiver, you were looking pretty good with only a few weeks left until the fantasy football playoffs. But unfortunately, all good stories must come to an end and this fantasy football fairy tale ended as abruptly as it started. Weeks 10 and 11, Fulgham played on over 88% of Eagles' offensive snaps, seeing 5 and 7 targets respectively, but only saw one reception and 8 yards in each of those games. After completely disappearing from fantasy football these two weeks, Fulgham fell out of most wide receiver 3 rankings and was now barely a flex consideration. Week 12, Fulgham was going up against a weak Seahawks defense on Monday Night Football, but he didn't get the start at wide receiver, saw only 52% of offensive snaps, and posted two catches for 16 yards. Fulgham really struggled to get separation from a not great Seahawks defense, and honestly wasn't a fantasy football starter anymore. Deeper leagues, he was still a hold, but there were much better options on league waiver wires. Week 13, Fulgham saw two targets with no receptions and was only on the field for 40% of offensive snaps and only got worse in week 14 with no targets and playing only 16% of offensive snaps. Travis Fulgham's remaining three games saw a slight uptick, but still never saw more than three targets and played under 43% of offensive snaps in each game. His total line for those three games were five catches, 72 yards, no touchdowns. In the 2021 season, Fulgham was relegated to the Eagles practice squad before ultimately being released in October. The Miami Dolphins then signed Fulgham to their practice squad, but was again released in December. In December, Fulgham was signed to the Denver Broncos practice squad and was elevated to the active roster for their Week 17 matchup, but was primarily used in special teams. He was then released from the Broncos in August of 2022 and claimed off waivers by the Green Bay Packers. Fulgham spent this entire past season on the Packers practice squad and his contract ran out in January 2023, leaving him a free agent. Travis Fulgham's five-week run was one of the most out-of-nowhere runs in fantasy football history that ultimately didn't affect too many seasons. It was such a midpoint of the fantasy football regular season that even if he helped you win some games those weeks, his output probably wasn't enough to get you to the playoffs. And even if those wins did get you to the playoffs, if your team relied heavily on Fulgham, you most likely didn't have a championship caliber roster. Even with all that, I have yet to talk to someone who played fantasy football in 2020 that doesn't remember those five weeks of Fulgham's dominance.